Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. Oh, hey, how y'all doing over there? What we got going here, we got uh, epoxy primer. Now, we got a car, okay, that's been sandblasted. It's a 1964 Volkswagen Carmen Ghia, and the owner basically had it sandblasted. They call it glass beating, but uh, the situation is it's basically sandblasting. Let's go look at that car, and uh, then I'll explain what's going on over here, okay? Let's go look at that car, and then we'll talk about what's happening right here, okay? You see I got three chemicals here, three uh, components that make up one that's going to help us out and do the job right. Okay, if we look right here, we're looking at an automobile that's been stripped down to bare metal. It's been gutted out. The body's been taken off the floor pan slash frame. And it's ready to be put in epoxy primer, okay? Now, epoxy primer is a type of a sealer that has a hardener to it, okay? It has a catalyst. They actually have a po uh, sealers that you can buy that don't have hardeners or catalysts. I like to use the epoxy primer, okay? And what we've done is we completely gutted it out, okay? It's been sandblasted. Once you have a vehicle that has been sandblasted or bead blasted, what have you, you have to get that in to a sealer. You have to seal that up to make sure that the moisture will not harm it in any way and cause or create, if you look right here where water has dripped, okay, surface rust. I'll have to sand that off before I prime it. But one step that we took before we decided to put epoxy primer on it is we went ahead and used a product called Pore 15. Now if you look right here you can see where it's been slopped up in there. Okay, now those were spots that were very heavily surface rusted, all right? And you can see that uh, we went in there and we used the Pore 15. What the Pore 15 does, that deactivates the rust and turns it into a solid hard primer, okay? It actually activates and turns rust into a sealer type situation. So we went ahead and did that and you can see that it's been done everywhere that uh, surface rust was present. And this car is now ready for epoxy primer. Okay, I got to sand that one spot up there but other than that it's ready. Uh, you don't want to touch your vehicle once it's been done like this. You don't want to uh, disturb it in any way. Sandblasting it, bead blasting it, whatever you want to call it, okay, is basically sanding your car, all right? Let me show you the difference between sandblasting and uh, soda blasting slash hand stripping. If you notice, the surface of this is very silverish color, okay? It looks like it might have silver paint on it maybe. Okay, but you can see that it's been taken down and it's very, very coarse and rough. Versus this car right here, which is a 1971 Volkswagen that has been hand stripped down to bare metal. You can see the finish on this is nice and shiny. Uh, it looks very smooth. It's not rough. Okay, and this car can sit here for months in bare metal and not rust. Okay, because it still has the factory uh, 
factory applied electroplated coating or whatever you want to call it uh, that prevents the metal from rusting out. And that's one reason that I suggest not to have your car sandblasted. So basically what we're doing today, what we're doing is we are applying our epoxy primer. Now epoxy plant primer is a type of a sealer, okay? This is like the extreme sealer that you can use, all right? Because it takes a hardener, a catalyst, uh, to activate the sealer, okay? They sell, very, they sell cheap, inexpensive sealers that you can put on your car, but it's not going to protect the bare metal, okay? It's not going to protect the bare metal like an epoxy sealer would. There's very, there's very many different brands of epoxy sealer, and there's, uh, there's a lot of different colors of epoxy sealer. The main colors are white, gray, and black. We're going with gray on this car, okay, And uh, because this is basically our first coat of a sealer type situation. And then, once we apply all the epoxy sealer to it, the epoxy primer, then we can go back and we can touch it, we can do our body work, we can take our time, and we don't have to worry about anything rusting out, rotting out, getting surface rust from moisture, this, that, or the other. Now, epoxy primer requires three chemicals, okay? It requires the primer itself, okay? It requires uh, an epoxy primer hardener, which is the uh, catalyst activator, okay? And it also requires some reducer, all right? This is urethane reducer, not lacquer thinner. Do not use lacquer thinner when you're using a urethane polyester type product, okay? That will create problems. You want to stick with the type of reducer that is designed for the primer itself, okay? Now, the situation is when you mix this up, when you mix it up, okay, you have to, there's a 30 minute window in between mixing it and using it, okay? Do not use it until the uh, primer, once the primer is mixed, let it sit for approximately 30 to, I, I let it sit 30 minutes, okay? You can let it sit up to two hours and then basically it starts getting mucky and old on you. So you got about a two to three hour pot life on that and uh, then it's bad, okay? You cannot reuse it. Once you mix your additive to it, your hardener uh, catalyst additive, once that is added to the primer, okay it activates it like a glue okay it's like using uh, getting epoxy glue the two-part epoxy glue when you put them together okay you got like five or ten minutes to use it and then it turns hard well that's the same procedure that we have with our epoxy primer and anything basically any type of primer or paint that requires an activator slash hardener is that way okay so what we're going to do is we're going to mix our epoxy primer up. I've got my plastic cup here. And I like to uh, use the paint mixing tops. You can purchase these at your uh, local paint and body shop supply stores. They're about $10, $15. Uh, they usually have a bunch of old ones that they'll sell you. Okay, And what that does, that makes it nice and convenient where you can uh, keep it mixed up all the time. You can actually take this off and put uh, an air drill on it or an electric drill and mix it very, very thoroughly. Okay, if it sits for a long time. The pot life on this will last forever. Okay, unless air gets to it. And then, of course, it starts getting hard on you and mucky. But what we're going to do is we're going to mix this up just like the directions say. Okay, I'm going to take my primer. I'm going to fill up my cup. Okay, and I'm using a type of a cup, okay, that we can read off of. Okay, all your paint and supply, uh, body shop paint supply, uh, stores, okay, facilities should have these cups and nine times out of ten they don't charge for them, they're free, okay. Then we're going to take our reducer, okay, we're going to take our urethane reducer, okay, and we're going to add 10%. Now what that's going to do, okay, there we go, okay, what that's going to do, that is actually going to thin it down to a consistency that's going to spray it through our spray gun okay and make it flow out better where there's not a lot of orange peel and it, it doesn't have that that uh, rocky road feel to it where it looks like a uh, uh, bed liner uh, rubberized coating bed liner okay this the reducer makes it all flow out nice and even and gives it a nice uniform uh, feel to it and a coat then the last and final step we are going to take our activator slash hardener 
Okay, now this is your normal type hardener, okay, that you buy with your primer, okay, but let me explain something. All epoxy primer hardeners are the same. You can use Joe Bob brand epoxy primer and use my friend Pete hardener. Do you see what I'm saying? So if you got a catalyst and if they're out, let's say you buy the Joe Bob primer here and they're out of the SWRNC hardener, but they got uh, uh, Lindy Lou hardener, go ahead and get it. It's the same thing. It'll work. Okay? Epoxy primer is epoxy primer. It doesn't matter what it is. Now, I will say that PPG, okay, that's uh, PPG does make a quick hardener. It's a fast hardener. It's called uh, DP402LF, okay, if you want to write that down. And what that hardener is, that's a fast hardener where you don't have to wait, okay? That means once you mix it, it's activated immediately, all right? It costs a few dollars more, but if you're really in a hurry, go ahead and get the 402 LF and you can use it. So we're going to take our hardener and uh, we're going to go exactly what the directions say on our hardener. Make sure that that lid's put on very tight, okay, and uh, so we don't ruin it. So I've had these two quarts here sitting for approximately 10 minutes now. We're going to go ahead and mix that up. Now we're going to mix that for approximately 5 minutes. Because we want to make sure that that is mixed thoroughly. We want to make sure that all the chemicals and all the reducers and the hardeners and the primers, okay, are thoroughly mixed. All right? And that's very important. This is the most important step of applying epoxy primer is to make sure that it's mixed thoroughly. Okay, when you apply the epoxy primer to the bare metal surface, okay, it only requires one full wet coat. If you feel uh, uncomfortable about the situation, you can go ahead and apply two coats if necessary. But it usually only takes one full wet coat. Don't be afraid to spray it on there. If you get runs in it, that's okay. You can always sand them out. This is just primer. This isn't paint. We don't want to get runs in it. We don't want to have mistakes. But if that happens, okay, no need to fear. It's epoxy primer, okay? It's not paint. One more thing that I'd like to remind you of, and this is very important, epoxy primer or sealer, okay? Any type of sealer, even if it's just sealer itself, is non-sandable. That means that you cannot sand epoxy primer, okay? It will gum up. What happens is if you wet sand it or dry sand it or whatever, it gums up, okay? Do you see what I'm saying? It gums up your paper and then it starts scratching the primer and then you have situations and problems. This is not a primer, okay, this is not a primer for uh, doing your body work for filler primer. This is not 2K primer. This is a sealer type primer, okay. This is used right after you strip your car to bare metal and right before you paint your car with your base coat clear coat or your single stage urethane paint, okay. So do not sand this primer. It's not made for sanding. And one more thing, this is also a tintable primer. If you're going to use white primer such as this, okay, here's our white. Uh, see, I use all different colors, but you can see that this is white, okay. You can actually take some urethane paint, okay, and mix it in with your epoxy primer to tint it to the color you want. We'll go over that later because that's basically, I'm jumping the gun here, and I'm going way fucking uh, beyond what we're really doing here. Uh, and I'll show you all that on our next little venture of epoxy primer and how to use it the proper way. I got to go in there and sand that car down. I got to get it ready. Okay, we had that spot there, that surface rust. We don't want to put epoxy primer on that. So I got to go in there and get rid of that, clean my paint booth up. My sealer's got to sit. We're going to come back after it's all sprayed. I'm going to look at it. You're going to look at it. I'm going to show you what it looks like, and you will see yourself. Epoxy primer is the way to go. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.